As the weather rolls in. Is we getting bad weather? No, I oh. just felt like okay. saying that. As the thunder rolls in and the lightning strikes. Turn the page. Another love goes cold on a helpless night. All right, here we go. You are listening to the sounds of the crooner. <laughs> the thunder rolls. The thunder rolls. Ben H., the crooner. Hey, what up? It is the Man Fuse podcast. I am Kay Lee, audio producer, voice artist, sitting here with a badass co-host, Ben H., real estate mogul. How are you, Ben? Buenos dias. I'm very good. Kay Lee just ate a Reuben. Uh, half a Reuben. My wife was quite generous when I walked in the door and said, baby, I got you some meat for your mouth. She did, too. She asked me if I wanted some. And, and I declined. You declined. I just ate lunch. Right. And you had a... I had some chicken. Just chicken. Grilled chicken. Grilled chicken. That's right. Sounds like a boring meal. It was, but I needed some protein after hitting the grinder. You have named your yard the grinder. And you got to experience almost two rounds of the grinder. Yeah, I was ran out of time due to baseball tournaments, but... Um, Would you say the name is appropriate? It was kind of brutal. I yeah. mean, I did two rounds and I was exhausted. It um, is brutal. And uh, I would have done another two, and, uh, and I want to get back to the grinder. Well, to clarify, and I did four rounds this morning. It took about 45 minutes to do four rounds. But it's a series of seven exercises where you go around the perimeter of my yard, which is quite large. It's quite large. Big yard. You start flipping tractor tires. Then you hit a big tire with a sledgehammer. Then you pull a sled. Then you carry a tire. Then you flip a tire again. Then you do a kettlebell. Then you hit the weight bench. Then you repeat. And that's one lap around the grinder. The grinder. About you, 10 to 15 minutes per lap. You know, um, not to be confused with the app grinder no this is <laughs> this is just the grinder <laughs> yeah. no no fancy spelling no grinder it's all lowercase all right. the grinder all right the grinder <laughs> even the t for and it's the. in blood it's in blood <laughs> today we're going to talk about some uh superficial shit yeah and then we're going to get into again Another serious topic that has happened to our society yes. with the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Yeah, yeah, pretty big deal. A very um, hot topic, a very sensitive topic, and we will try to tread carefully because we don't want to offend anybody. No. Um, at the same time, we got to address it. Because well, it's, a, it's something that's facing humanity right now. And it's having a global impact. Let's get to some of the superficial. Okay. My favorite. Yes. Now, Ben, you sent me an article last week. Is superficial the same as petty? Petty, not serious, yeah. um, doesn't really matter. You know, It matters to me. And I think it matters to our audience because to some, we are the new NPR. That's right. You know, if, exactly. If you want to stay current and you want real talk. On the is, superficial. Yeah, stay the, current on the superficial. Then here you can Man come Fused. here. Yeah, Manfused. <laughs> Manfused.com, everybody. Apparently, there is a term yes. called boyfriend dick. Devastating. <laughs> Why is it devastating? Devastating term. Why is it devastating? Well, what does it mean? I mean, I, yeah, I, I came across this article and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. And I read through it and I thought, oh, no. So the definition of boyfriend dick, if yep. I have this right, is a dick mm -hmm. that is not too big. Yeah. Not too small, right? but it's just perfect. Yes. It looks pretty. A perfect penis. And they are literally just like, yep, this is my boyfriend. As soon as you give it to them. That's or right. Or as soon as they see it. It says, the kind of dick you can ride every night because it fits just right. The sample sentence says, his boyfriend dick makes me feel like Goldilocks. It's just right. <laughs> <laughs> now... The second entry for Boyfriend Dick yes. helpfully contrasts it with the brand of penis known as Vacation Dick. Ooh. A dick that is far larger than average. It is good to fuck once to take a vacation, but it's too big to be an everyday occurrence like Boyfriend Dick. Yeah, th this, is a, this is a fine line. So Vacation Dick is, is one that maybe just a, a one runner. Yeah. A one one or two timer. Right. Because it hurts. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you're not going to have somebody chasing you around the house with, with that, that thing. monster. Yeah, yeah that's a, not going to be a, daily a nice basis. life. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> that's not going to be a good life for a woman. No. However, it might be a good vacation, maybe a good night out, maybe a little one night stand. Can't walk for a few days. That's okay. Maybe got to roll in a wheelchair. Yeah, I mean, no problem. No problem. <laughs> that's a, it's vacation dick. Right, right. You know, it's a, it's like a once in a lifetime deal. It's like you go on vacation and you just get hammered drunk. Right. You don't want to do that every night. No. 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 Every on every, you know, one or two glasses of wine. Maybe you're fine. You know, right. but, but you go on vacation and you might drink one or two bottles of wine. That's right. You might wake up from feeling remorse and shame from all the bad decisions I wonder and if that people, vacation dick. I wonder if girls go on vacation looking for vacation dick. I suppose they do if this is something that's being discussed. Boyfriend dick, it's a dick, a yeah. penis that you can settle down with or at least see three times a week, right? Yes. It's a dick you could metaphorically take home to meet your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. Oh. Hey, mom, dad, this is Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know, it fits just That's right. right. <laughs> After hearing this term, a lot of um, viewers and readers of Men Health took to social media to express their thoughts on boyfriend dick, while others expressed wanting more from a man. I mean, what more do you want from a man? Well, there was the, part of the article uh, says that Sky Blue, a Playboy and penthouse model and adult actress, first heard the term while talking to her now ex-boyfriend. We were talking in quotations. We were talking about how much I loved having a six inch cock at home as compared to the nine to ten <laughs> inches I would get on set. She recalls. No. He said. Well, thank God I have boyfriend dick. So this is literally the genesis of boyfriend dick, I guess, was a conversation between a porn star and her boyfriend. Her now ex-boyfriend. Now ex-boyfriend. Probably because he couldn't get the vision out of his head. Of she, her taking maybe she needed a ten, vacation. Taking that nine to ten inches on set. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, there's certain things when it comes to dating a porn star that you just got to be okay with. Well, yeah, but you know what? I think having her say it and describe it just really drove it home for him. <laughs> I think it was all good up until that point of her saying, this big behemoth that yeah. I've been taking on set, yours is, fits just right. <laughs> where oh, where my his goodness. was giving her nightmares. <laughs> it was like a water bottle. <laughs> It was, it was a, it was a thermos. <laughs> you know, one of those thermoses you'd put hot soup in and take it to camp. <laughs> this does bring up an interesting topic for men and women, guys and gals alike. Um, you know, it makes a guy think to himself because this is not a conversation of big or small. That's subjective, right? Mm -hmm. This is two categories. You either have boyfriend dick or you have vacation dick. And then for the females out there, maybe they're thinking, geez, I married this dude with vacation dick. No wonder I don't want to have sex every week. Yeah. But he does. Well, of course he does. He's, I mean, you know, someone with vacation dick is going to want to have sex all the time. Yeah, it's just as much as the guy with boyfriend dick. Does this draw a distinct line? Because I have a friend, one of my best buddies, okay? We won't bring up his name. Okay. This guy, without a doubt, has vacation dick. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's just, he gets laid constantly. Girls literally approach him. They just want the beat down. But he has a hard time keeping a relationship. Ooh. In a relationship, he's not able to get fulfilled sexually the way that he desires. It's not that he doesn't love the girl. It's just that she's not putting out and he gets pissed at, at a pace that is on, on par with his sex drive. 
So he's constantly, you know, he might need a reduction. Jerking off, you he know might what I mean? Need a reduction. Whereas he can go out into the street and dude, he's got girls throwing it at him every single day. This guy. Yeah, it's he's got vacation dick. He's got that vacation dick. Do girls when they look at a guy, maybe they're thinking, does this guy have boyfriend dick or does he have vacation? Oh, he's got boyfriend dick. I'm going to make him wait make him wait 30 days and see if I can get into a relationship. Oh, this is a vacation dick guy? No problem. I'm going to wear my slutty dress and get banged out tonight. I'm not even giving him my phone number. I'm going to be sore tomorrow. And and it's all good. Right, I'm done. This will last me a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a damn good point. Getting into the minds of the female. They don't know sometimes until, you know, their hands there are in their is. pants. Right. Right. And they're like, okay, oh, thank God it's vacation dick. Yeah. Right. If he touches bottom, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't touch bottom. You don't have vacation dick. Right. <laughs> it's a virtual impossibility. Yeah. You might have baby dick. <laughs> well, it's funny because, you know, I was doing some studies on- They don't on, want baby dick either, though. On the anatomy of the vagina, and the average vagina is 3.7 inches deep. Whereas and, but it average, also depends on the position, too. No, uh, I mean, just the- Yeah, of course it does, but I mean, just the, the thing from the, you know- Yeah. Average 3.7 inches. So, you know, average guy, I think, is five and a half mm -hmm. inches. That, would that so the good? average guy should be able to bottom out on right. the average vagina. Right. Thank God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on. But when it comes to vacation, Dick, <laughs> that, that thing's just getting plowed out. <laughs> So here we go. So there's another aspect of the population we have to talk about. Uh. So for a queer man, boyfriend dick has a slightly more nuanced meaning. Oh. It's still the Goldilocks of dicks. The, the Goldilocks. <laughs> it's got little blonde hair like off the head. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the one that fits just right. And Kyle, 29, says boyfriend dick also leads to more spur-of-the-moment sex. As a bottom, spontaneous sex can be harder if your boyfriend has a huge dick. <laughs> <laughs> Just if anybody wants to know. If anyone was wondering. Mark 33 spelled it out this way. With boyfriend dick... You don't need to prepare before taking it. <laughs> you can take, take it, it anytime. You can take it anytime, douched or not. <laughs> God. Jesus. So, see, that was a point I never thought of. Robert, 28, was told by his current partner that he has a boyfriend dick. It's really nothing to be ashamed of. And then look there, Sky agrees. Being told you have a boyfriend dick is a compliment. Well, thank fucking God, because when I read this shit, I was like, damn it. <laughs> I don't have vacation dick. I don't have vacation dick. I don't know if I have boyfriend dick or not, but I know I don't have vacation dick, Chris. Well, right. Well, damn good. it. See, this article right here is going to help the self-esteem of heterosexual yes. and gay men everywhere because the term boyfriend dick is a great way of making people with average size dicks that's not demeaning. Thank God. Okay? <laughs> we should start- I'm feeling better by the word. <laughs> we... <laughs> we should start a marathon. That article was a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a 4K- <laughs> <laughs> the boyfriend dick 4k yeah we could all gather <laughs> pat each other on the back how, how did this article make you feel chris well i think it made me feel if i had to dig down deep yeah that my penis was okay good <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like you are reaching into the realm of vacation dick are you all the way in the vacation dick realm are you straddling the fence or are you clearly in boyfriend dick territory so <laughs> <laughs> every man if i were to answer honestly i think i would be on the threshold of 
the border <laughs> of boyfriend the dick. outer realm <laughs> i might even be a tip over into vacation dick <laughs> like if we were running a marathon <laughs> and my dick was leading the way <laughs> it might cross my helmet might go over the finish line it'd be in first place <laughs> I, it, on, it, on the boyfriend dick team well <laughs> yes <laughs> it might a girl a woman knows yeah. how to get you maximum stimulated. <laughs> you can cross into the different territory. Yes. It, it's just, you know, I wonder if, if what we're talking about in regards to vacation dick is just a freaking, you know, an, uh, an arm-sized penis. Well, if you're saying the average is five and a half, that up to six, seven Probably would be in boyfriend dick's territory. Yes. I think you hitting in that Tommy Lee and yeah. above, you are in vacation. Eight plus. Eight plus I would think is that vacation you are. vacation dick. Now, you could have a girl that is that maybe six or seven yeah. is too much. Right. Um, you know, you might have a girl that needs to go to baby dick status. Yeah, you might. Yeah. Which would be a blessing if you Not, had a baby dick. Right. Well- I don't think at the end of the day when you look down in the bathroom, you're thinking it's a blessing. You probably think you're cursed. Until, yeah, but until you find a woman that needs it. Oh, this will do. <laughs> Would that make you feel good? Those other ones just hurt. Hey, there's someone for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, let's transition. Yes. Now, like I said, we are... The future of NPR right here. Could That's be. right. So we talked Superficial NPR. We talked about the male anatomy for a second. Now you sent me another glorious article, Ben. I'm on the look. I'm on the hunt. There are five types of vaginas according to this bikini waxer. This really struck me as as interesting. It's something that inherently as a heterosexual male, I've known that there are different types for a while now, but this really lays it out in a nice comprehensive guide. Well, <laughs> well here's the thing. I can speak very detailed on these because I used to be a body piercer. So That's the right. amount of... Do you agree with these five categories, Chris? Oh, totally. Now, there can be slight variations yeah, where... maybe you're where, between this one and that one. Right, where you can have the characteristics of both. So, and seeing the male and female genitalia mm. and body parts on so many people over the course of nine years... Yes. Um, I really... I really came to know these five types of vaginas. Wait, so what are the five types? Well, Ben, the first type of the five yeah. would be curtains. Curtains. Okay, curtains, this is a vagina where the labia minora, those are the inner lips, if you don't know, extend out past the labia majora, uh -huh. which are the outer lips. So the inner lips are coming out and flapping over the outer lips. Yeah, it's kind instances. of sticking out like a tongue. Either a little bit yeah. or a whole lot. Right. This seems to be the most common of the vagina. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. The other one is the Barbie, okay. which I believe would be my personal favorite. Nice. Is the Barbie. Yes. Well, this is, this is the one that is the least common, but it's the one that the majority of people assume that this is how they should look. Right? Correct. It it's is the perfect. Right. It's the little split right in the middle, just the perfect right. little... Right. Cute, dainty. The thing. inner labias are completely hidden mm. inside the labia majora, and both sets of lips rest on the pelvic bone. We should share this article on the website so that people can go and look at it, you know? Can we do that? Yeah. Well, that's what, okay. Uh, yeah, I believe we can. Yeah, sure. I'll put some links on the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you? Here's the thing. Females undoubtedly more complicated. We've talked about two different types of dick, and now we have five different kinds of vaginas. Well, we talked about three if you want to include the baby dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's, yeah. there's the below average, too. Right. The third one is Mrs. Puffs. Mm. Yes. These look similar to the Barbie, but the lips sit lower on the pelvic bone and are puffed up or thin and hanging. 
This is the camel toe. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is the classic camel toe. Right, when you see... This is the thing that camel toes are made of. (laughs) (laughs) Correct, absolutely. When you see a woman wearing some tight pants and you can see the outline... You see that monkey foot? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That that would be camel toe status. Monkey knuckle. That's moose Moose knuckle. knuckle. (laughs) I think that's coming up. Oh, boy. Okay, then we have the Miss Tulip. This one looks like a flower about to bloom. The labia minora slightly showing throughout the whole length of the labia majora. It's different than the curtains because the inner lips are both exposed and contained. I kind of like that one. That one's not bad. Yeah. Okay, then you got Mrs. Horseshoe, a.k.a. (laughs) Moose Knuckle. (laughs) Dun, dun, dun. This is when the vagina opening is wider at the top which exposes the labia minora, but the labia majora touch towards the bottom and stop the labia minora from extending below them. The shape looks like a horseshoe in general. Seeing a penis is normal, but looking at a vagina is taboo. Moral of the story, every vagina is different, but if I had to vote, Uh and I think America should vote, the men of America, which vagina do you like? And uh, you know what? Most guys would probably go, any of them. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say all of them are equally as majestic. Okay. Well, I've seen. Some. I mean, with respect to all the ladies out there, nobody's complaining about vagina. There is vaginal rejuvenation for some of you. <laughs> <laughs> Kay Lee has a little bit more of an in-depth view of this. Of what He's I He's seen like. a lot of different ones. Yes. And some I wish I would have never seen. <laughs> but then again. I've seen some penises that I wish I would have never seen. I've held some penises that I wish I would have never held. (laughs) I've taken money for holding penises. Uh, I wish I would have never taken money for holding. This is horrible. That is truth. Now, truth. We will post up this article and maybe we can get a um, a vote. So you're going with Miss Barbie? Yeah, I got to go with Miss Barbie. I think I'm on Team Miss Tulip. I like the tulip. Okay. Yeah. You're entitled to your opinion. Yeah. However weird it is. Ben, let's move on. I heard about something the other day that scared me. It wasn't true. It wasn't me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. What is it that you heard about? So I think we've all felt something when we're in a deep sleep and you wake up and you have a... Where did that bite come from it wasn't here yesterday like a bite on your like a bug bite like a bug bite yeah i think i saw a statistic once that the amount of bugs that you actually swallow while you're sleeping really a lot more than you would ever think right caught a number of bugs crawling across me in the bed spiders bugs all kinds of stuff right it's crazy but did you know that there are mites having gang bangs on your face (laughs) Straight banging. No, I didn't know that. On your face. That is weird. And nipples. Oh, God. Apparently, these eight-legged bugs live in our pores and may soon become one with humans. Wow. The study warns. Yes. So you have mites on your face? And they're coming out and running the train. God. On your face. There's a party on your face. Yes. Well, this this goes into the subject of... What are we? Are we just mites running around banging on someone else's face? (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Like driving cars and having families and living in homes. We're just on the surface of somebody's balls or something like that. We don't even know it. Because those guys probably don't realize that they're on your face. There's probably flat earthers. Yeah. These creatures are very much real and are becoming such simplified organisms that they may soon become one with us. And I don't know what the fuck that means, but they are carried on every human on the face, eyelashes, and nipples, moving between follicles, looking for a mate. Wow. That is hilarious. And scary as fuck. If you see these little things, it looks like it's got a beaver tail. Yeah, it does. It looks like a little mite slash beaver. Eight legs. They have sex on your face. <laughs> this is something out of a horror novel. I mean, it's just part of being human, right? At the end of the day, I, there's bed bugs. There's face mites. They've got to reproduce. Where are they going to do it? It's not like they're going to go to a hotel over there on the uh, side table. No, they're going to. They're they're looking for mates in between your eyes and your nipples. That's gross. 
Yeah. That's so, gross. So there's a male mite blowing loads it's on just, your fucking yeah, face. Impregnating. I wish we Other could, mites. I wish we could zoom in and get some audio of what's going down on it, your face. I bet we could find some microscopic mite audio. Mite video at least just see these things. Just eh, I eh, mean, yeah, eh, the little eh. the little picture that you have is is uh pretty scary. I'd like to see them in action. Maybe we can make a movie out of it. That'd be hilarious. A porn. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny mite porn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, so, my gosh. All right. So that was your superficial shit for the day. I think right. uh, we need to get into um, something that happened on Friday that has really sent protesters out in the streets. There's been a lot of backlash, and that is the overturning of Roe versus Wade, which Roe versus Wade was a case yes that in the 70s in the 70s um that centered around abortion correct and a woman's right to have abortion right so roe versus wade has been in effect since the 70s since 73 correct me if i'm wrong but there were still some limitations some states were still making it hard to get an abortion yes so Roe v. Wade was a landmark decision of the U.S. Supreme Court in which the court ruled that the Constitution of the United States generally protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose to have an abortion. So the overturning of that was the Supreme Court saying abortion presents significant moral issues and that the court has decided that the federal government can't decide whether or not a woman does have that right, and they sent it to the states. So if you live in California, very liberal place, you're going to be able to have an abortion. Nothing's ever going to change. Nothing changed if you live in a very liberal place. Where it did change is in more conservative states like South Dakota, for example, or Alabama, where prior to the 1973 ruling, they had laws in place that prevented females from having abortions. Right. In some states, it's going to change. In some states, it's not going to change. But ultimately, the federal government said, we're out. You guys figure it out for your state. I'm not a woman, if you didn't know that, Ben. Yes. But I do feel like overturning that, you're telling women what they are and are not allowed to do with their own bodies and make the decisions they need to make for their lives. Right. Because you're telling them that the state you live in is going to decide. And so the federal government, by just throwing their hands up. Right. And some circumstances where I don't believe an abortion right. should be had. You know, like as we were discussing off mic, you know, eight months in, you're not going to go, you know what? I just don't want a kid right now. And, you know, an abort. Like, right. you know, you are killing a child that would yes. have been birthed a month from now that's correct and that child is developed it can hear i don't support that you're right there are many instances and especially i think this is going to affect a lot of the lower income mm -hmm. sector of people how many kids are being turned into the foster community on a daily basis because their parents aren't stepping up to the fucking plate. Yeah, I and mean, being adopted. Right. Or and a, you have significant problems throughout the world. And really, you know, even I was listening to a governor of a conservative state who was basically saying, hey, even the plan B pill is something that's not going to be allowed. Because at its core, that's like an abortion of two sperm, which have decided to come together. They're calling even that an abortion. So even things that you could take really, really early on. Yeah. Like the day after. Yeah. The, That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. So, and herein lies the, the anger and the frustration that people have. And honestly, it's where liberal views and conservative views clash significantly because there is a line that needs to be drawn, I think. I mean, my opinion is I agree with both sides. I think there's a line that needs to be drawn. I think that you should be able to have an abortion up to a certain amount of time after you've been impregnated for any reason. You know what I mean? For any reason whatsoever. 
like a due diligence period on a home. You can back out for any reason within however many days, however many months. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not. I, I can't speculate as to what that is. Right. I thought there was something like that. I guess in some states. In some was, states, there, there 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 can be. Yes, there was even with. Correct. Even pre Roe versus Wade being Correct. overturned, there were some rules in place in That's some right. states where you know you couldn't you could abort up to like six weeks. Or but something. even that gets to the point where liberals will say, "Well, even that's infringing upon a woman's right." They're saying, "Hey, as a woman, I should be able to abort this baby at any point in time." So then becomes the question: At what point is it okay to take a human life? Is it okay to take a human life while it is still in the womb of no. its mother after it comes out of the vagina? Is that when it becomes okay or not okay? That's when it becomes murder, when it breaches the vagina. I mean, this is, this is the problem with the whole thing. Because when you really, really look at it, if you are for life, you're for it all the way to what point are you not for life, right? Are you not for life within two months? And what does that actually mean? And at the same time, women are being raped. Women are victims of incest. Women are, you know, having unprotected sex and getting knocked up by dudes constantly, constantly. Right. Teenage girls, you know, 15-year-old girls. Which most of them have losing no Losing their bus- virginity, getting knocked up Which all most the time. of them have no, no business being a mom at 15 years old. No, they have no business whatsoever. And yet it is what it is. Or they can get an abortion and continue forward with their life. Some people are very one side or the other. I'm really, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I have a very difficult time wrestling with the subject. I think at my core, I would have to say that I am more pro life, but at the same time, I'm also for women's rights, and I'm also for the right of an individual to do what they want. But then comes this question, when does it become okay to kill your own baby? Right. At what point? I know this argument has been made for the last, since, since Roe versus Wade. Well, was and people bro- are going to say, well, hey, guess what, bro? You don't have to worry about it because you're not going to have a baby because you're not a woman. Yeah. So I've heard arguments and, and I've heard a lot of strong women express their th- thoughts that this is not where it's going to stop. This is going to be, this is a sample Mm -hmm. of what more is to come. Right. Eradicating gay rights. Yes. Um, You know, basically there's a lot of women in this country that feel like they are now second class citizens. They have worked and fought so much to be able to have all the rights as a man right in this country we live in sure now they have taken three steps back because now they can't even make the decision on what to do with their own body with their baby's body well but it's their body they're well, the, the baby's one... in their body right but it's their body i mean i, I get it I'm i mean with it. like you know what happens when you have i heard the term and i don't remember it off the top of my head but it, it's something it, it's a medical thing that happens while giving birth where, you know, the mom could die. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a couple of um, yes, there's a couple of things that could happen. How who makes that choice? So right. you can't you're going to lose. You're going to die. But your baby's going to be born. So. So what you can die, but right. your baby's life yeah. has to be protected. Yeah, I don't know. What would the mother choose? Would the mother choose death or would the mother choose the baby to live? You well, know? I don't think, depending on your household and what your what kind of world you're bringing the baby into. Yeah. What if there is no husband? What right. if there is no dad? What if there is no one to? So that well, means your kid's going into a foster home. And 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 there's that. And there's also mom's a drug addict. What good are you going to be? Yeah. To that child that you're bringing into this world. Right. It's going to become. A product of of the system. If the baby's eight months, you know, in your belly at eight months, I would think that they would try to save the mom and the child. I, I would hope at that point you wouldn't well, have to choose between one or the other because. But what's happening a lot, man, is that women are like going into labor and going into and saying, "I don't want this baby," then and, they're, and they're and they're literally going in and they're and they're killing the baby. They're clipping pieces, clip the leg off, clip the foot off. Baby's still alive. Clip. They they literally clip up the body. With scissors. That is 
No, I don't agree with that at all. And then they suck it out with a vacuum. No, I'm not down with that. That's... I mean, dude, it, you know, it, it's just like, and they rip the baby out. It's disgusting when you really hear about these procedures and, like, what's actually happening. is fucking like a horror movie. It's not just like, oh, you go behind the curtain and, you know, we... Uh, Take, you take this pill and then, okay, you have, no, it's like a fucking mess. It's right. disgusting. Well, that, you know what I mean? But I mean, I would think that that's happening. I guess that happens even at like a four or five month mark. Yeah. So there's the line. But when you're talking, it's just a seed. I mean, look, if, if I'm if I'm advocating from the perspective of women right, women's rights here, and, and again, I'm not a woman, but if I'm advocating for that perspective, I would have to say, listen, it, there's a certain amount of time. Yeah. You know, if you're like 60 days or less pregnant. Yeah, that's what I would agree it's with. It's game on. But if you're past the 60-day mark, you, you're how about seven months? We got to figure this out. There's there's a lot of different options. Right. I don't know. But, dude, that's that's so – it's not my position in life to, to say that to people. And honestly, when you really look at it and you look at how many people die from so many different kinds of things, is it just part of life? I mean, is that what the females are saying? Are they saying, hey, look, this is just part of life? I've got a baby in my body. If I don't want this baby, I should have the right to get rid of it. Right. And that's just that's just part of life. It's just a it's just a uh, nasty part of of humanity. You know, like how we go and bomb other countries and how we go and kill people with fucking machine guns and fucking fighter jets and mustard gas and nuclear fucking bombs and look what's happening to ukraine dude like this is humanity humanity is launching rockets into fucking shopping malls killing babies grandmas grandpas moms dads it's humanity bad side of humanity well but it's nonetheless part of it and it has been all the way since the beginning of humanity Right. The, you know, where people are pillaging other people's villages and so on and so. I mean, there's there's so much death and destruction. You can't like be the pot calling the kettle black here and taking some sort of a moral high ground and calling some female a murderer who, you know what I'm saying? Right. When, dude, there's fucking, there's murder happening all over the place in a million different fucking ways. And you know what? In a lot of ways, you're supporting it and you're a part of it. And you know what I mean? And in some ways you're not. I mean, but it's just part of humanity. I don't know, dude. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's a really crazy issue. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, you're right. And some of these same judges that overturn this will support war and the murder of, right. of you know, people throughout the globe right. for various reasons. Right. Well, it's why it's taken so long to get it, a decision made on it. I mean, what has it been? 40 years? They've been trying to go back. 50 and, years? Yeah, right. almost 50 years. 1973. 49 years. Yeah. It's such a detrimental issue. Yet we are the United States of America. And the truth is the states have always been run different. And that's what makes us the United States of America is that we don't have an overarching administrative federal state. For most things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the point. That's right. what makes us free. You know, we have 50 states and the states are self-governed all the way down to the local level. And then the states report to the federal government. Should the federal government be telling us these things? You know, I mean, vaccine is another thing. Should the federal government be able to say, hey, you have to get a vaccine or we're going to clip your Amex? Or should that be on the states as well? Which really is how it was during COVID. You know, Florida, for example, Fuck you. gave a shit less. <laughs> right. You know, whereas California, you're basically a lock communist lockdown. Difference in the states. So it's like if you want those rights, I guess you're just going to have to move to a state that offers them. Or raise hell and vote in. Who you need to get the, the job. politicians in your own state who share the same views as you do and can, can change to... those laws on a state and local level. Or try to get it pushed through the federal level again. But now that the Supreme yeah. Court is is uh, got who it has in, in yeah. it, it's going to be a hard fucking... Yeah. Yeah, Trump got three picks, dude. I mean, that's, that's incredibly rare. In a four-year term, to get three Supreme Court picks is incredibly rare. He definitely set the stage, you know, for, for this being even a possibility. I feel bad, you know, for the women who feel that have taken me three too, steps man. back. Me I, too. And I, and I mean no disrespect whatsoever to women from my pers 
particular perspective. Oh, I don't think uh, your perspective, I mean, is, I think your I've, perspective is about where I sit. Like, yeah. you know, I think it's 1973, um, it is a, it was established that abortions during the first two trimesters of pregnancy were permitted. Mm -hmm. So the first two trimesters. So at that point, it, the baby hasn't completely yeah. developed, right. you know, um, I don't remember what a baby looks like in the first two trimesters, but it's small. It's I mean, very small. It's that to me probably would be a spot where I would cut it off, and that's where, that's where I'm saying like that right there. I feel like should be the benchmark for it. Yeah. But, at what point does the baby have rights? At what mm -hmm. point does the baby have legal rights? Certainly to be after, protected. Cer yeah. Certainly it does after it comes out. It has. You cannot kill that. If you kill that baby, you're going to jail for the rest of your life. Yeah, I mean, I you would think even at eight months, seven months. I mean, like, I'm just saying, when it comes out, it's a fact. It has rights. Right. When yeah. it breathes that air, it's That's a citizen. It. Yeah. You know, of whatever country. Yeah, absolutely. Protected by the rights of the land. In China, they don't protect a whole lot of those rights. Well, they 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 didn't allow people to have more than one baby for a long time. Yeah, they would kill the baby. Correct. They would kill it for you, and that's an example of a closed society where the people serve the state. That's the scariest thing. I think, honestly, that for the United States, it's probably a good move to send it to the states because it shows a, a less authoritarian stance on behalf of the federal government. It shows that our high court is ruling in a way that sides with the idea of open society, whereas... It is the state that serves the people and not the people who serve the state. In other words, they're making decisions on abortion based on how many people are being born at a certain period of time or something like that. I don't know, man. It's, it's a detrimental issue. It's sad all the way around. Yeah. I Especially mean. when you have a child. You get to see that child go from a little baby all the way to, you know, where my child is four years old. I mean, it's just, it's an unbelievable thing. My oldest is nine and, you know, he was a... <laughs> yeah, he was just a little swimmer. He was a twinkle in your eye. He was a little swimmer. That's right. At the head of my PP. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean... It's nuts, dude. Right. It's a miracle. To make this a little bit more lighthearted. Yes. So does that mean when I, when I pull out yeah. and I spray everywhere... <laughs> Am I murdering my exactly. potential That's offspring? Right. That's right. Exactly, I mean, man. People would argue no because it hasn't hit the egg and it hasn't, you know, merged. And I mean, it's this whole thing, you know. It's crazy. We had to talk about it. I don't. I feel like we couldn't ignore something so big and right. and something that's affecting so many people on either side. You know, I understand both sides. I think that the unborn should have rights. To the extent that they're being, that their rights are being upheld. I, I think that the unborn should have rights. Yeah. At, at a certain point. I really do. There is a little bit of um, power about having the laws on a local level yeah. more than it being mandated on mm -hmm. a federal level. We were talking about in China. I mean, you get one and that's it. Yeah. All of China. No matter... Is that still in effect to this no, day? No. No. No, but it was for some time. Doesn't and their mean, population dropped. And it doesn't mean tomorrow they won't enforce that again. And and it was it was, uh, it was was no females. Yeah, I guess a bunch of males. You can go fuck each other. Yeah, you know it doesn't mean? matter. <laughs> You're right. We're not going <laughs> to... The gay not, boys got the shit figured out. Yeah, dude. we're not going <laughs> to increase our population and our fucking mouths to feed. Probably deal with a lot less bullshit, too. I don't know. A lot less drama. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot less, less bickering. <laughs> hey, bro, you want to... I'm pissed. Yeah, me too. Let's go get a beer. <laughs> After that, you can blow me. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's just weird. I mean, yeah, I guess it's just to me. Yeah. Does it make sense? I mean, I, you know, it's funny, too, because, like, I've got, um, I've got a number of gay friends, and most of them, most of my gay friends are... Not what I would describe as not flamboyant, right? They're right. They're they're you would not you would not even know they're gay. you would not guess or know not. And I and I, honestly, I don't care. And I and I love them and I respect them the same. It's no big deal. They're not peacocked out. But no, <laughs> and 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 you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But I'm just saying it's 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 interesting because um, 
one of my friends, he was telling me about how he came out of the closet in uh, in college, and he felt like he was just the most normal guy and like no one knew. And he said when he came out of the closet, everybody was like, yeah, dude, uh, we know. <laughs> 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 like is are you really like trying to come out of the closet right now because like hate to burst your bubble uh, we've known forever <laughs> we've known for a long time buddy we it, still love you yeah <laughs> ever since we caught you playing with barbie dolls and <laughs> we knew we've oh, never seen man. you with a female ever ever and we knew your friend john yeah wasn't just your friend wasn't but... just your gym buddy yeah <laughs> 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 but there are a lot of people who have not come out for fear of yeah. how people around them will react, which is yeah. another tragic mask to have to wear on a daily basis. It is, man. A true it's, self. It's, a, it's a stain on humanity, honestly. I mean, it really is. I think that's the big turnoff with conservatism, for example, you know, like the conservative viewpoint of things, whereas... You know, it's anti this and anti that, and it's only what the Bible says, and it doesn't make sense. No. That's not a reflection of humanity. It's just not. Well, you know what? And a lot of times people will take certain things out of the Bible, and they'll focus in on that one part of the Bible. Yeah, and that was and just be a, a book written by a guy. Like, right. I say do what you feel. Yeah. I mean, do what you feel is right. Yeah, mm -hmm. do what you feel is right. Exactly. You only get one life. Yeah, man. Live it. Yeah, hell yeah. Live Go it, to Costa Rica. That's right. Eat some uh, shrooms and fucking <laughs> walk around naked. Whatever you need to do. Whatever you need to do. Hey, if you have any ideas, thoughts, feelings, um, show topics, you want to communicate with us, hit us up at manfuse.com. Thank you for listening this week, and we will be back next week. Ben H., anything else you want to say? Out here. I'm good. Love you all. <laughs>